Ladies and gentlemen, if you've been wondering what Naraka Blade Point is all about, or you just want to get into the game yourself, then you're in luck because today we're going to cover all the basics you will need to get started in the game. But first, what is Naraka Blade Point? Naraka Blade Point is a battle royale, very similar to a lot of the games you've already played, but there are some differences and some unique aspects that make the game a little bit different. First, most of the game is focused around very simple ranged combat as well as melee combat that is upfront and more based on a fighting game rather than a shooter or a third person shooter. The ranged combat is as you'd expect, but the melee combat is based on a rock, paper, scissors format. You have white attacks, which are your common attacks, blue attacks, which are your charge up attacks, and red attacks, which are counter strikes. It works just like this picture shows where if you can white attack into a blue, the blue will take priority and the white will lose, which means you'll get hit by the focus attack. If you blue attack into a red attack, it will focus on a counter. It'll stop the blue attack and the red will take priority. And likewise, if you red attack into a white attack, the, the white will win and the red will lose. So as you go around this circle, you'll see different counters and things like that. So this is what it looks like. If you have a melee weapon in your hand, you can basic attack for white attacks. These are very easy, simple attacks that deal damage and can push people back. If you hold down your fire button, you'll charge up a focus attack or a charge attack which has this blue focus bar like this. This will be go through any white attack and be able to damage your opponent even if they're already attacking you. However, if you hit both of your attack buttons at once, a red counter is initiated. If you ever blue attack into a red counter, you will not only have your attack blocked, you will have your weapon disarmed and dropped onto the ground. So you'll have it on the ground and you'll have to pick it up again. Which seems pretty strong, and it is, but there's definitely a lot of counterplay around it. You have your basic attacks to go through, so you can, anyone that tries to counter spam, if they, if, you know, if they throw out, throw up a counter, then you can just hit them with a white attack and it will go right through. But you can also feint and cancel your charge attack. So if you hold up a charge attack and you let it go, which there's various kinds, you can charge it up and then jump to cancel, or you can charge it up and then crouch to cancel, or you can charge it up and then dash to cancel. So if you know someone is uh, a player that likes to throw up red attacks often, you can just go ahead and charge, cancel, and then hit them with a white attack, and it's very easy to play on that. So that's where the core of the rock paper system, system goes. Next, let's talk about traversal. You can traverse almost everything. You can climb buildings, you can mantle up onto roofs, you can grapple onto different areas, you can climb trees as well. As you move around the environment, you'll find that most things are able to be interactable. You can dive through windows if you need to. You can break through doors and you can wall run as well. So if you go up to a wall and run on it, you'll be able to get a wall run off of that. One more important note about melee combat before we move on. There is no blocking in the game. You can't block attacks by hitting a block button. However, you can deflect attacks by attacking into the attack that's coming your way with the same level or focus that the attack has. So for example, if I white attack forward into a white attack, it will deflect and neither attack will land. It's only if they match in their focus. Another note as well is if you're doing a charge attack, the only way this deflects another charge attack is if you actually launch the attack itself. I see people charging up like this, thinking this is going to block the attack, but it won't until the attack itself fires. So you know, charge it up and then release it in order to get that block. And then say, obviously the counters won't focus counters, but that's the idea is that if you want to block, you have to figure out what your opponent is going to attack you with and then respond with the exact same attack to deflect it. Additionally, if you ever run, if you don't have a weapon on you, you can still attack with unarmed. And this functions the same way that normal melee combat does. You have white attacks. You can charge up uh, heavy attacks. The only thing you can't do, at least currently in the demo, is you cannot counter if you're unarmed. Next, let's look at traversal. So you can climb up onto buildings. You can hang on ledges. You can also climb up onto trees as well. So if we get up here on top of this ledge, we can actually go up to one of these trees and climb up into the brush where we can't be seen. So you'll get this kind of view if you're in a tree, you'll have a reduction of the, the shrubbery and brush that's around you, the foliage. You can actually stand on top of these trees to look around for opponents and they won't be able to see you very well unless they're in a tree as well. Additionally, on most structures, you can climb up and land on the bottom of the roof and try to lay up a ambush on someone. Um, and a lot of times this doesn't get utilized heavily in the beta, but I'm sure once the game comes out, a lot of people will start getting creative with how they use the traversal and movement to sneak up on people and engage in combat. And if you're ever up in the air and would like not to be, if someone's trying to snipe you, you just don't like your positioning, you can force yourself down to the ground if you're in the air by pressing crouch, 
which will get you down to the ground as fast as possible. Next, every character that gets into the game will have access to a grappling hook. You can grapple to the nearby surfaces and you will get an icon when it is in range to grapple to the target. And you can also grapple to people, which will stun them briefly and keep them in place. This is your other way to overcome traversal obstacles. So you can jump across ledges, grapple onto something that's across the way and pull yourself across. The grappling hook itself does have a limited amount of ammo. You will pick up grappling hook spools that you will need in order to use the grappling hook, but it allows for a lot of freedom in movement and your ability to counter people that are running away as you can simply grapple them as they try to escape you. Naraka Blade Point is a character-based battle royale, which means you will be selecting a character when you go into a match. Each one of these heroes has a different set of talents as well as a basic ability and an ultimate ability, which will charge up over time. Which hero you choose is I up to you, tricks. and they all have if different win, skill sets, like going 20%. stealth and being able to teleport, summoning an instant deflect wisdom, attack, or death. transforming that into a heal. giant enemy demon, or creating giant so dust together. storms that deflect projectiles and slow enemies. Next, let's talk about the in-game progression systems that you'll need to understand to play the game. This is your inventory, and you have soul jades, items, and weapons. Each of these inventories can be expanded through upgrades in the game. You'll see a lock icon when the uh, slots are blocked, and you'll find these in chests and at shops where you can buy upgrades to expand your inventory. This is not an out-of-game progression system. This is in the match. Soul jades are passives that you can collect throughout the match. They give you things like health, resistance to ranged attacks or melee attacks, uh, headshot resistance, so it puts a helmet armor on you as well. And as these go higher in rarity, some of them start getting really cool, like being able to add stealth when you dash, removing the sounds of your footsteps, and many more. So what Soul Jade build you go with based on the weapons you have and what you find is entirely up to you. All weapons have what's called durability. This is a system that allows you to replace ammo from other battle royales. You'll see the current durability in the bottom right corner on your weapon, and when it reaches zero on melee weapons, they will reduce the damage they deal, but they still will deal damage. However, with ranged weapons, if you're out of durability, you're technically out of ammo. In order to fix these, you have to pick up these weaponry chests, which will allow you to restore the durability on a weapon, which for ranged weapons refreshes their ammo and for melee weapons just refreshes their durability. This is one of the vendors you'll see. They're marked on your map with a gold icon. When you walk up to them, you can spend your in-match currency, the Dark the Tide coins, on consumables, upgrades for your inventory, uh, as well as random soul jades. And you can also buy what's called Earth Charms, which is effectively an airstrike you can place somewhere on the map once you've purchased it. To collect the Dark Tide coins, the currency you need to spend at the shop, you can find treasure hunts, quests, and bounties in the world that look like this scroll. You activate them and you'll earn a new quest, which will ask you to go do something to get a chunk of the Dark Tide coins. You'll also find them in chests skewed throughout the world, and you can steal them from other players that you have downed by looting their corpse. And you'll find airdrops that spawn in the world that are shown on the map by golden circles. When those spawn, those are essentially shops where nothing is uh, has a price so everything in the shop is free you go to the airdrop you pick it up and it can have very rare items in it which allows you to kind of catch up if you're far behind in the gear and there are a few out of game progression systems mostly around unlocking cosmetics and, and different opportunities at soft currency outside of the game the biggest thing you need to be aware of is the I talent system which allows you to add more grappling distance energy per second energy cap dodge energy cost and other stats like this as you play the game, you will unlock more slots in this talent tree, and then you can go to each talent itself and upgrade it using soft currency currently to make it stronger. So you usually wanna fill out this page as much as you can before going to match as it does provide a good amount of benefit. And that does it for this get me started guide to Naraka Blade Point. If you learned something today, or if you just enjoyed watching the video, please consider leaving a like down below. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and I'll see you in the next one.